What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always guys, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a brief trading update as well, what stocks am I currently in, as well as what stocks am I watching, what ETFs am I watching for the rest of this week and for the rest of this month, heading into the middle of the month in May of 2019. So before we do get into the content for today's video all I ask from you guys is if you enjoy the content here if you enjoy the videos you enjoy the breakdowns of the stocks the news all that different stuff that this channel is comprised of feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and I'm forever grateful for everybody out there sticking with the content watching the videos, liking, subscribing. It really does mean a lot to me, guys. And without further ado, let's talk about what ended up happening here in today's market. And it got ugly, needless to say, towards the end of the market here. The S&P 500 ended up closing the day at about 29.23, down 22 points, down about 75.75%. This was probably one of the bigger red days that we've seen over the past two, three weeks, I would say, right? And you can see, you know, check, take a look at those. Check out those candlesticks, guys. Pretty big in terms of the past couple of weeks. I guess the last big one that we had was on the 21st of March, which at this point was about three, four, five weeks ago, more like five weeks ago, right? So pretty decent red day today in terms of the S&P 500. Going over here to the Dow Jones, down about 0.61% at the close, down 162 points, uh, 162.77. And this one, you can see, based on the past couple of weeks, right, this was one of the bigger red days that we had, right? We popped down, or we were, we were rather at nearly 26,700. We popped down all the way to 26,400. So quite a big swing there in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Hopping over here to the NASDAQ, guys, we've been talking about this little channel that we've been trading in, right? We can see we got topped off at the resistance. We we're pushing down now. We're down about 11 points right now but mind you at the time that I'm recording this video 6 30 p.m eastern standard time this is the future right so if we go to the one day one minute we can see exactly where it ended up closing 4 p.m so roughly at 4 p.m we can say the Nasdaq was about 30 points higher from where we are right now but it was red guys the entire market today was red not too great of a day so let's just hop to the SPX version very quickly let's do some breakdowns and honestly I'm not surprised that we are pulling back today right we talked about we've been talking about over the past couple of videos how the markets are poised for a pullback sooner or later right could this be the start of a big pullback could this just be a mini pullback right before we continue the uptrend only time will tell but what the technicals are telling me right now guys is ever since we pushed to that <clears throat> to that all-time high, right? Ever since we pushed up, you know, past 29.40, we've been seeing some resistance or some struggling for the SPX to maintain these levels, right? We pushed to the all-time high um, today. We hit another all-time high, actually, but the first one was here, right? We popped up. We pulled back down a bit. We tried fighting to hold it here, right? We ended up popping up today, and then we drastically sold off, right? So needless to say, there is a resistance Roughly at about 2940 to 2955, that general area is a resistance right now for the S&P 500, right? And we can clearly see that on the longer term charts. We're pulling back pretty aggressively here. So we've talked about the support level to watch out on the SPX, which is the 50 simple moving average here, this green line that you're seeing. Make sure, or rather keep an eye, are we going to pull back to that tomorrow? Are we going to maintain that level and continue the uptrend? Or are we going to break that level and potentially sell off even further, which would be great for an e ETF that we trade, which is TVIX, guys, and we're going to talk about that one here in a couple of minutes, about which ones I'm personally watching. That is definitely one here that we are, I'm going to be watching because the markets are selling off. So we saw the Fed meeting today was at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, right? We can see 
You know, the markets didn't really perceive that meeting great, right? We can see at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, we were here, right? And we popped all the way down. And typically every single, you know, Fed meeting, right? This one this one was a 30-point drop here. Every single Fed meeting over the past couple of meetings, we investors, traders, people in the community, we want to know our the, is the Fed going to increase the interest rate, right? It, are they going to drop the interest rate? And we saw it today, they're keeping the interest rate the same, right? They're expecting it to, it to hover around 2.25 to 2.5%. And I have some uh, notes here. I actually have an article pulled up. The central bank held its benchmark rate and a target between 2.25, like I just said, to 2.5. On a 12-month basis, overall inflation... And and inflation for items other than food and energy have declined and are running below 2%. So the FOMC did make a technical adjustment. Interest paid on excess reserves that banks keep at the Fed will now be set at 2.35% or 0.05 percentage points lower than before. So in terms of the Fed, you know, in terms of the Fed rate, right, it's good that they are keeping the interest rate the same, in my personal opinion, right? If they were to hike it, you know, the market could have acted very, very negatively to that. So that's just the key takeaways, guys. Take it for what you want. Do your own research. I don't want to spend too much time on that in today's video because I value you got your guys' time a lot. So let's just go over the Dow Jones very briefly, guys. This is a lot of clutter here, I can understand, but the key things that you want to keep Keep an eye on, we've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, are the levels, the levels between 26,400 and 26,800, guys. That 400-point buffer, that's the horizontal channel we're trading in right now in terms of the Dow. And very simple, we pulled back today, right? The entire market pulled back. And if we look on the 30-day, 90-minute chart, and again, this is super sloppy, guys. The trend lines might be confusing you all. But what you need to know is, we're at a support right now at a previous resistance at about 26,400. If we break that level tomorrow, that's going to be the break of the support, right? And the next support we could be headed to in terms of the Dow Jones is going to be $26,200. But let's say we maintain 26,400 tomorrow. We slowly start to recover from there. We could be pushing up back to the 26,700 to 26,800 resistance level, which is the next spot you know, the Dow could end up going to. So the NASDAQ, we kind of briefly already covered it, right? A little bit earlier on in this video. We talked about how we pulled back today, very obvious, but we're still maintaining this overall channel's support here, right? We've been trading in this channel over the past couple of days, really since the 25th of April. We hit the all-time high at 78.79. We bounced here, boom, 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 kind of been zigzagging, you know, in between this level. So tomorrow, are we going to maintain this level, potentially pop up and then break the resistance, which would be a breakout bullish pattern to the upside? Or, you know, are we going to break the support here and potentially test the 180 SMA again, which has been a support, right? We notice a bounce here from back in the beginning of March down a couple hundred points away from where we are right now, right? These are some scenarios that could happen, but what I'm watching and what I advise you to just keep an eye on in terms of technicals is this little horizontal channel here. If we break out that's going to be, in my eyes, a very, very bullish pattern, right? We could be hitting 8,000 from that point in time. Um, you know, we just have to see how the market ends up reacting tomorrow because we saw, again, a very steep decline in the S&P 500, the overall markets. So let's see. I'm approaching with caution, but we have to see, is this going to carry on into tomorrow, this selling? That is what I'm waiting for. So in terms of you know, my trading update today, we saw Apple this morning actually ended up selling off to $210 per share. We saw they popped up. I believe they did pop up to 212 roughly 213 after market hours yesterday when they reported their earnings. We popped up to 212 roughly pre-market hours. We sold off and we hit that same level of support roughly where we bounced or rather maintained yesterday, which was roughly $210. And when I noticed this and when I saw Apple 
aggressively popping up from that level, and we can see it on the one day, one minute. You know, this, we pulled back, opened up the margin of profit. This was simply a gap fill play on my part, right, in my personal opinion, right? We pushed down from 212 to 10, opening up not a crazy amount of margin, but around 1.2%. We found the bottom here. We formed this little V-shape. Right, we popped up. The EMA was aggressively shooting up here, and we started to trend back up. And once we broke out of this resistance here, actually, the one from about 9:21 a.m., nine minutes before the market opened Eastern Standard Time, once we broke out of there, that was the resistance I wanted to see a break above before getting into Apple on my day trade. So I pretty much just got in, guys, roughly at about, I believe, 211.56, 211.50, that general area. We pulled back. I obviously didn't sell there. We ended up popping up a bit, and I ended up selling my shares Honestly, once we broke a little bit above 212.72, roughly the 213 area, that was where I ended up selling. I believe it was 213.25. So from about 211. 30-ish, 40-ish, roughly is where I got in, up to about 213. Roughly, it was a 1% to 2%, 1.2% trade on Apple here, guys. Roughly more like a 1% trade on Apple. So not the craziest of gains, but with my trading, really, especially the day trading, I like to take around a 1% to 2%, and I'm cool with 1%, guys, and I want to just sell out Play it safe because Apple from yesterday's open or close or yeah, yesterday's open was at about two hundred dollars. We were already up thirteen points. The Fed meeting was coming up. I wanted to just play it safe, right? And it seems like I made the right decision, guys, because if I held Apple all day, let's say, I would have ended up being in the red right now due to it tanking nearly four or five dollars. Once the Fed meeting kind of was wrapping up and towards the end of the day here, you can see it tanked, right? So Apple, I ended up day trading it, pretty small gain, but nonetheless, it was green and green is green and green is great, guys. So what else did I do? That's pretty much it in terms of my day trading, right? I'm still in Procter & Gamble, right? I'm still in Facebook. We saw a pretty big move, not a big move today, but a pretty solid move on Facebook stock. We started to pop into the 196 area. It was showing some promising push here, a promising push. I was hoping to get out of this 197 level from yesterday, but Facebook stock ended up getting crushed after the Fed meeting again, the entire market pretty much did, and we ended up closing at about 192.50, but the thing here that I'm seeing, which I like, is we're holding that support at around 192 to 193, which has seemed to be a solid support over the past couple of days. That's a good sign heading into the after hours, heading into tomorrow, right? So hopefully tomorrow we do end up popping back up into the 193, 194 level. But in terms of my position, guys, I'm simply holding roughly at the 193 level right now. And I want to add more up into the upward, mid upward, um, you know, 195 level. That's the plan right now in terms of Facebook. Procter & Gamble, guys, this is one that I'm still holding. We kind of saw a decent retracement here, but what I want to tell you guys on Procter & Gamble is to see and take a look at this pattern. On the 10-day, 30-minute, we notice a very, very, um, uh, not, not familiar, but a very repetitive pattern that Procter & Gamble has been on over these past couple of days. Hear me out on this one, guys. Look, we sold off on earnings. This is when I ended up building a position, right? I ended up buying more on this day, I believe, but that doesn't matter. The pattern that I'm showing you guys is take a look. We pop up aggressively one day, make a higher high, high we pull back for a hot for a higher low from the previous and then the next day we pop up for a higher high right so it seems like one day we're popping up making that higher high followed by the next day being the retracement day but we're still holding a higher low on the retracement day which means the uptrend is still intact right that's the key thing here you see we popped up higher high pulled back higher low from the previous. We saw the big pop-up day right after the little red day, and now we're seeing the red day, which was today. So hopefully if the pattern holds, tomorrow will be that next pop-up day to get us into the 107 level. That would be absolutely ideal right now for Procter & Gamble. 
Will it do that? We have to see what it's looking like pre-market hours, right? What is the stock looking like? Is If it's trending up into the 105.50s, you know, 105.70s, right? Pre-market hours heading into the beginning of the day. That's a good sign that Procter & Gamble is going to be continuing the trend. And let me just remove this drawing very quickly because it wasn't perfect, right? It's not showing you the exact pattern to perfection. But if we redraw it here, right, this is a better look at it, right? This is kind of what we're seeing. Higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Hopefully this is the higher low from the previous, right? And we pop out. So I'm simply holding Procter & Gamble right now. I consider this one of the safer swing trades that I'm currently in with a price target at around 108, 109. That is where I would ideally like to sell this stock. So that's it in terms of my trading update, guys. Again, I'm being a bit cautious due to the aggressive sell-off that we saw, excuse me, in the market. And this is going to lead me to what I'm watching tomorrow, guys. So take a look at this ETF here for the longtime viewers. You know this. I trade this one a lot on red days. Of course, you might know this not for my channel, right? You might know this on your own. And that is TVIX, guys. This is one that's going up whenever the markets, is SPX in particular, is selling off, right? We noticed that a very good day today, 7.15% in the green, up $1.41. And this one, in my opinion, is poised to do very well if the market continues to sell off. Remember, we saw that critical level on the SPX being the 50 SMA. There's still some margin down to that level, guys. So keep an eye on the futures tomorrow morning. If there seems to be a sell-off, which I personally think is very possible if this panic selling, it seemed like a bit of panic selling, in my opinion, towards the end of the market, if it continues we can very well gap down to the 50 SMA, opening up a very nice potential day trade and margin on TVIX. So just keep an eye on this one. I'm definitely going to be having this ETF pulled up on my screen in tomorrow morning's trading session. Super important in my personal opinion. So TVIX is the number one that I'm watching tomorrow. And in terms of some other ones, guys, you know, again, I can't reiterate this enough. I'm being cautious, but we saw AMD actually get into the $26 level, which if you recall from a couple of videos ago, I was hoping AMD would tank to this level and get to the point where we are right now, which is the 180 simple moving average support, right? This is a level, very critical level for advanced micro devices, right? This has been a spot where we've held above over the past couple of months. And let's say we do end up maintaining this support level and slowly start to climb back up, maybe into the 26. 80s or rather we are there already let's say the 2690s $27 flat this could be a very good opportunity for a swing trade on AMD especially since their earnings were solid right this is a pretty good situation in my eyes I just need to see the confirmation to the upside on AMD drop a comment down below let me know what you guys think about this are you touching AMD tomorrow are you completely just keeping an eye on it, not looking to put money? I would love to know what you guys are doing. So AMD, honestly, guys, AMD, you know, Facebook, those are the top two that I'm watching. And to be, to be quite frank, I feel like I haven't been talking about a lot of new stocks recently because I'm really just focusing on ones that I've had success with in the past, I'm not really looking to just go out there and trade a bunch of different stocks. There is one, though, actually, that one of the uh, subscribers, one of the members in our Discord group chat was talking about, which is ticker symbol BE. And this is one that's breaking out of this downwards wedge. We were talking about this on private chat, and it had a pretty good day today, up 70 cents, up nearly 5%. 0.5%, 5.14% to be exact. And this could be the beginning of a breakout pattern on BE. So I'm definitely watching this one tomorrow. We're at a resistance right now at about 1440. So if we break that resistance and old support from back in November of 2018, this could be the breakout that we need to see upwards to $17, right? So the initial breakout was the breakout of the resistance of this wedge. 
Now we're at the second spot, which again is that resistance at around 1440. Let's break out of there. If we break out of there, this could be a good sign that we're headed back up to 1770. Actually, the next resistance is not 1770. It's around 1650, right? So this could be a nice little margin of profit, nice trade on BE. I'm keeping an eye on this one tomorrow, no doubt about it. So we saw crude oil today. It's kind of been fussing around this 180 SMA support. We ended up selling off a bit aggressively here. We bounced back up to the mid-63s, which is a good sign that we are retaliating. Not retaliating. I can't believe I just said that. Bouncing, right? We're rebounding. That's what I wanted to say. Not retaliating. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> rebounding up to 63.50 that's looking really good right now so hopefully we can end up getting out of this 50 SMA resistance here for a trade on UWT but if we're looking on the past five days you know the uptrend is still intact here right higher highs higher lows all that jazz we just need to see a truck upwards until the $64 level then UWT in my eyes is going to be a pretty pretty solid play and I'm keeping those on the watch list guys so Facebook AMD BE TVIX UWT those are my top five as well as Google guys Google I talked about that in my video earlier today if you guys were able to catch that until Google finds a bottom though I'm not looking to trade it because we're seeing here it's really not finding a bottom quite yet right it's still dropping it's still making lower lows we need to find a bottom and my personal opinion guys you know once we do find a bottom let's say we we head to 1130 that could be the next spot we're headed to based off this chart you know that could be a very good entry if we confirm it as a bottom if we slowly start to pop back up and we confirm the reversal so ideally here is i would like to find the bottom consolidation at the bottom for maybe a day or two days three days however long it takes and then a slow pop up to the upside and if the markets are looking right right if the overall markets are looking healthy at that point i think that could be a pretty good entry on google ticker symbol g-o-o-g so let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought about this, if you have any comments on the Fed, what you ended up trading today, my picks for tomorrow, Apple, you know, AMD, I would love to know what you guys think about that. Just drop a comment down below and we can chat. Also, if you enjoy the video, feel free to drop that like, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel, hit that notification bell as well so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I appreciate every single one of you out there keeping up with the content liking subscribing it means a lot i'll catch you all in the next video good luck tomorrow have a great rest of your night peace out